Today, I really want to talk about insurances and how the insurance contracts do not need to tie down a practice. Um, there's a lot of in and outs of insurances and whether or not to go fee for service. And I'm seeing that some offices do it correctly. Some offices don't do it correctly. So I'd really like to talk about that and how to get out of insurances the correct way um, without the mass exodus of patients. The Dental Brief is brought to you by Omni Premier Marketing and the amazing guests who bring wisdom and advice that you can put to use to take your business and practices to the next level. Find us on Facebook and join the conversation. Get ready to grow because we are kicking off the next episode in three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Dental Brief. So glad to have back with us uh, Jill Shu. Jill, say hello to everyone. Hello. Thank you for having me. Glad to have you here. You're with Custom Dental Solutions. Um, we've had one of your colleagues from Custom Dental Solutions on the program before. Now we're fortunate enough to have you back, so we must not have messed up too bad the first time. Um, why don't you just go ahead, Jill, and tell us how'd you get involved in dentistry? How'd you become a consultant? In yeah, so I actually started in dentistry about 15 years ago. Um, I started out as an office manager, and I stumbled across dentistry. It was definitely not something I was seeking for, and I'm glad that I found it. Um, I became really passionate about the business of dentistry, in particular, the insurances of, in, of dentistry. Um, it really is something that it's really cool that I get to work with it every day. I get to go into practices now and customize solutions for practices so that they aren't held captive by the insurances. <laughs> Yeah. So you said that you love um, or you love working with insurance. Most people hate it. I think it's really healthy to have a love hate relationship with the insurance companies. Right. There's a lot of opportunity to use insurance companies to help take your practice um, to the next level. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. Um, I often refer to the insurances as play the game. Um, it's a yep. game we love to play but hate to play. But we we have to we have to play it. It's it's a necessity in our, in our field and in our relationships with our patients. Yeah, awesome. So Jill, let's just jump right into it. You get phone calls from dentists every day. I know we're going to talk about insurances, but what are these? What are they telling you? What are they calling you? They're asking you about. They're they're sometimes even a little panicked about keeping them up at night. What are these questions that you get asked? The big one in 2023, and of course, we're 23 days into the year, um, is how do I get out of network? Um, some of them have called a little late where they've already gone through the process of dropping the networks, and yep. they've seen the patients leave the, the practice, and now they're in panic mode, and they're trying to back up and try to undo what has been done um, with that yep. relationship with those patients. Um, in the perfect world, they're calling us to find out what do I need to do to start the process of going fee for service, um, and kind of what does that look like? How do what reports do I need to run? What do I need to tell my patients? What do I need to tell my team? Yeah, yeah. So um, it happens, right? That you you get this call. I know you do because I see it too much on the internet, on social media forums and what have you, Facebook groups that. I dropped, I went, I dropped my insurance, told on my patients and I've lost 40 or 50% of my patients overnight. What do I do now? Right. You get that call. We do. Um, right now we've, we've gotten it a couple of times already this year where, you know, they, they've, they've had the patients start to leave. Of course, when we drop the insurances or we change any insurance contracts, we know there's going to be a change in our patient base. That's to be expected. Um, we would be absolutely naive if we thought that we would go in and wouldn't lose a single patient. Um, that's just not reality. So we do know we'll lose some. Um, the big thing that we have to do once those patients have already started to leave and the process has started is we have to kind of do damage control. We have to start yeah. educating our team, um, educating patients, changing the, the mindset that patients have. Um, oftentimes we're promoting insurance views without realizing we're promoting insurance views. Um, and sometimes just yep. tweaking some of that verbiage that we're using internally to start changing that mindset. So patients understand that their insurances are a for-profit company. They're not there to provide care like the dentist is. Yeah. So, um, I want to, a little disclosure, you didn't ask me to do this, but, um, 
it's a short show, 10 to 15 minutes, right? We get some awesome information, but of course we're not, you're not going to get all the information that you need to, um, move your practice from in network to fee for service in this amount of time. So don't expect that, you know, you're going to get three or four actionable steps that you can take today. And, um, it's going to be a no brainer from that point. It's not the case at all. Right. So you, you need to put some time into this. So some questions that I think you can give the answer to that people can run with it. How soon, like if in an ideal situation, I know someone's going fee for service in a couple of weeks, you're going to do your best to help them. Right. If that's our, if that trigger has already been pulled, you're going to help them. But if, if it's your practice and you're considering it and you have 80% or 75 or 90% of your patients are, are coming from in network, how soon before you drop those in network insurance companies, would you start the process of getting ready to drop them? Yeah. Great question. The, the ideal timeline, um, this is, this is what I always tell offices that are thinking about taking this step is that you're going to want to be the point of contact with the patient first. Um, whenever you change the insurance networks, your insurance companies that you had those contracts with are going to send notices to your patients. And those letters are not going to be friendly. Those letters right. say your, your provider is no longer in your network and your provider is no longer accepting you as a patient. Here is a list of dentists in your area that accept your insurance. So the yeah. key is, is that we want to beat that letter to the insur that the insurance company is going to send out and have that communication with the patient first and foremost so that we have the ability to answer the questions and tell them what we need them to know. So ideally, yep. minimum of six months before we start making any changes. Or at least one visit, hopefully two one visit, visits. Hopefully. In the <laughs> hopefully at least a minimum of one visit. Now that letter that comes out, I've seen some of these letters mm -hmm. and I, I think a lot of people think that everybody thinks just like they do, right? It's a trap we all fall into um, constantly. Well, I wouldn't do that or I would do that. Well, there's a lot of crazy stuff that I would never do that I see people do all the time. So it tells me that not everybody thinks like I do, right? And I don't think like anyone else. Some of those letters, I've seen them when they come out. Some patients, I think, look at that and think their dentist did something bad. Like it actually, it, it is the way, the, the level of, we'll call it professionalism, in that letter, right, how right to the point it is, almost makes it look like, hey, is my dentist in trouble? Did my dentist break some kind of insurance laws and the insurance company no longer works with them? That happens, doesn't it? Absolutely, that, that's a great point. It's, it's definitely a, um, it's a punishing letter. It, yeah. It's not worded nicely. It's not in yeah. our favor. <laughs> Yeah. So educate your patients, right? That's one thing that you need to do. And I think there's probably more to that. I would recommend, and I'm sure you, of course, do have some type of a plan. Don't just like, oh, hey, by the way, right? Make this a process. Yes. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. Do it in stages. You know, start with yeah. the first stage being maybe one or two of your smaller plans that you might be in network with. Um, and then in stage two, you do your second biggest and your third we do the largest and we don't have to name the elephant in the room. We all know which one that is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think most people probably don't, um, what you're talking about. Um, <laughs> <laughs> for sure. All right. So what's, what's step two, what you inform, educate, now what do you do? Yep. And part of that education process is also educating your team, making sure your team is on board, um, making sure your, your processes is going to be on board for that out of network process. Um, so what I mean by that is, how are you handling the, the claims that are going to be paid directly to your patient now instead of in office? Um, the yeah. payments may not come directly to the practice. How will you handle that? And how are you going to communicate, communicate that to your patients? So they sure. know what to expect financially. Will they have to pay up front? Will they be billed later? Um, I still recommend, obviously, just because you go out of network does not mean that you are, you're, you're no longer having to call the insurance companies. You're no longer having to do any customer service to the insurance company. In fact, right. I always say going out of network, now your, your workload actually goes up because you want to go above and beyond to prove to a patient that just because we're out of network does not mean that we're not going to work for you or that we're not right. going to help you utilize your benefits and maximize those benefits. You almost have to do more to show that to the patient so that they don't choose to go down the road who is in network. You have to set yourself yeah. apart. Yeah. So let's, um, let's 
let's back up quite a ways. I think there's certain practices out there that shouldn't even attempt to go out of network, not because of the timing, just because of where they're located, what, where they're at in their life stage, what's going on within the practice. Do you, if you agree with that, what type of practices do you think should po po postpone even considering going out of network? Yeah, thank, thank you for bringing that up. I, I know one of the things that our company, Custom Dental Solutions, does really pride ourselves in is that we don't believe in the cookie cutter approach. We do believe every practice is unique and we want to work with the doctor learning about their philosophy and what truly what their goals are and how we can truly assist them in reaching those goals. Not every practice should go out of network. It's okay to be in network with practices or with insurance companies. Um, you just have to do it appropriately if you're going to make that change. If you want to be right. in network, that is completely okay. As long as it's something that allows you to continue to practice the way you want to do dentistry and make sure you have your systems in place, whether it be how you're collecting insure or your patient portions on the day of service, um, how you're going to re reappoint those appointments for patients, make sure you are managing the practice appropriately if you are going to be in network. And again, there's no right or wrong answer here. Um, I don't think that anybody should approach any contract as, well, my neighbor so-and-so says to do it, or right. I heard it on a podcast and everybody says to drop all the networks. You have to right. do what's appropriate for your practice and make adjustments according to what meets your practice's goals. Right, so it is, you, you can't know by just asking, hey, or, or hearing, who did have success with it, right? Because, and I will say this, most people know this, but a constant reminder, some people may say, oh, it's been awesome. Our revenues actually went up doubled or, you know, all these great stories, but there's a lot of stories out there too about, wow, it almost killed us, right? Or it was a nightmare, or I would never even do it again. That those stories exist too, right? Absolutely. Um, and, and unfortunately, insurance companies, they, we, we spoke in terms of the punishment with the letter. They also oftentimes will require you to be out of network for two years. So this is yeah. a decision that you want to make appropriately and don't make it lightly um, because yeah. the insurance company might not let you back in for two years. We've seen some situations where it's handled so well and with such poise that the patients don't leave a practice and there's no, no loss of patient base. And on the flip side, yeah. we've seen it go from a practice producing 1.7 million in a year to now producing 900,000 and they don't know what to do. They are in right. panic mode. You know, yep. it's, if it's not handled again, it can definitely bite you. Yep. hundred percent. Um, Joe, I'm going to leave this last question to you and I know you'll give us great information. If you're looking for a consulting group to help you in this process, obviously your company does this, but what would you look for? What is some advice? Um, in helping to find the right consultant to help you go fee for service? Yeah, I, I think the, the biggest question is find out how they're going to serve you and your needs. Um, somebody can't push their own agenda on you. You need to know what you need for your practice and for your team and for your patients. You know your patients more than anybody and don't yeah. let somebody bully you into a solution that doesn't sit well with you. If you're not sleeping at night, because you don't agree with the solution, don't jump to it just because you signed a right. contract. Um, so yeah. be sure to find out what their goal is for you and how they're going to apply your thoughts into that that process as well. Yeah, that's awesome. Jill, thank you so much for coming on. Um, I'll come back to you here in just a second. I wanna encourage our audience, um, check out your website, ton of information on there, customdentalsolutions.com. Uh, Check it out, give them a phone call. I'm sure you'll be glad to um, answer any questions that we didn't answer here. Um, Jill, Chu, thank you so much for coming on the show. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having me.